joining this session is actually quite quite many of you. Uh, today's topic is SAP API management, and to be honest, this is I thought it's a bit niche part of uh, IT domain, if I may say. Uh, I hope you will enjoy. My, I will do whatever I can to to open the topic. Uh, the let's let's go maybe with number one. So the the oops the goal of today. Yeah. What what I'm going to show you, right? So I would like I would be happy to go through the key capabilities and features of Epic API management platform and bring you the understanding uh, of the concept of API as a product and what it actually is. Uh, touch few major use cases. Uh, so who may need this API management and who can benefit from it. Uh, my ultimate goal is actually clarify one of the solution building blocks for for the modern application architecture. Right? So the whole idea is that the API management as, uh, as a discipline is, is, is there and there are uh, platforms which provide these. And when the broader solution is drawn, it, typically it's one of the boxes which we can use. So the question is where, where to use it, how to use it, when we can benefit and uh, uh, what to do with that. Right? Um, the level of the session will be probably more like this. We will talk about not a lot about on technical things. So I would say this is uh, my assumption was that this is prepared for the solution architecture community, uh, which means that there won't be a lot of energy things. And the main reason is because, as mentioned, this is quite a niche, probably the niche part of, of IT, and I'm not sure we can go very deep nerdy, but if, if there will be interest, we, of course, we can. <laughs> All right, so uh, in regards to the questions, feel free to ask them anytime. You can just interrupt me or you can write them in the chat. Uh, at the end, I hope we will have some time uh, to talk about the questions uh, and answers. Uh, typically, in the fancy presentations, here is some kind of a motto. Uh, I was struggling to find one. Actually, not, not struggling too much. I, I, I intentionally put here some collective fellows of Servians because during my work here, I had a couple of people approach it, me with, with the question, OK, so what, what actually uh, are you an APG guy? Yes, yeah, so what, what are you doing? Can I leverage you somehow? Right? I have already API gateway in place. So can you explain me if I need this or not? Uh, and that's actually, let's say this is more or less the, the motto of today's presentation. I hope that after this, this session, we will be able to answer the question uh, to the extent we need to answer it. Uh, who am I? Uh, one of you. Uh, I'm professionally exposed mainly to the integration of the different protocols and platforms over the, my career. It, it includes service bus, it includes some telco integrations, even the protocols which are not uh, HTTP based or let's say the human readable base. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the integration. I like when things are connected together. Um, for me, API management was actually very interesting. Like it, it was interesting experience for me based on to compare like the uh, the enterprise int application integration and the API management domains. And I hope that I will be able somehow to bring this excitement to you too. Uh, I'm with SoftServe around four or five years or so. Um, that's before I used to work on uh, different, uh, uh, on the different sides of, of, of a room, I would say. So I used to work for, for the enterprises. I used to work for the, for the vendors of telco equipment and, but yeah, now I'm in SoftServe. Uh, so we more or less understand why I'm speaking about that. Now, what is Apigee, right? Why Apigee is uh, on the table? There are two reasons. Um, I don't know why, which one is first, which one is second. Uh, we have quite a strong competence in soft serve in regards to the Apigee. So this is something we can confidently talk right, to on all the different levels. Uh, in regards to our topic still, for me, the primary goal was that uh, APG, and this, this this picture is from 2022, right? But um, all the, uh, nothing nothing changed over the last years. APG is still the leader there in the API, man it's API management uh, government program, right? Uh, so uh, what I'm trying to say that uh, they are, in my opinion, they are like, 
introducing the, the things how API management should be, right? So they, they probably are one of the, well, definitely the, the longest, uh, one of the longest on the market. So a lot of the things which are implemented on the RPG, they are more or less treated like sort of a standard for, for the API management as a domain. So whatever we will explain, I will try to be agnostic in the concept part, uh, but still uh, I, I think and I believe that the way they implement it is, is, is a good way to, to do these things. That's why uh, it's also there. Uh, all right, use cases. Uh, we are returning back to the to the to the most like um, the obvious things which which came to the people's mind when they talk about when when they think about API management. Uh, I have some. Oh, this is a mistake here. Sorry. I have. Well, I'm backend developer. I have some services. I want to make them available outside, and this is obviously like I, I don't. Everyone knows that we typically do not expose. I don't know the the microservices or anything else directly. We need some some layer in between, and this is the basic case which everyone knows. And this is what I mentioned, which probably come come to everyone's mind when we talk about it. Now the reality is much more complex, right? So uh, actually API management as such includes much more actors in the use cases, right? So as, as an application developer, uh, I would be happy to have the APIs which I, which I can easily engage, right? I, I'm sure all of you had the situation when you need to, to, to communicate with some other system. And if you need to spend more than 15 minutes to find their API contract, it, it became boring. Right. I would like to, to know where I can enter, where I can find the documentation, how I can connect the interface, and how can, how, we, how can I, as a developer, immediately start developing. Right. On the other hand, on the other side of, uh, of the edge, there is a product owner. So, okay, I have developed some product. I expose it as an API, and I want the, its, its consumption to, to grow up. Right, as soon as possible, and ideally, I would be even happy to 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 make it purchasable, or in our in our world, it is called it monetize this API. And for the product owner, it's it's as much important as as it is for the application developer uh, to make sure that because those guys are like a clients of these guys, right? So we need to make sure that whoever is wants whoever wants to develop the application and start calling our API, uh, this person has everything in place. And on the other hand, we, we, we want to make sure that we are able to charge this person at the end, or we, we are able to get some, some benefits from it. Uh, the generic IT functions, generic means um, the broad guys like security and maintenance, they would be happy to make sure that APIs are secured and the usage is visible. Right? So I need to know, I want to understand what's going on with my APIs, if I have plenty of that. And last but least is, I call it project solution architect. Uh, the typical situation is as soon as we're talking about the platform in between, people immediately uh, trying to put there some additional uh, capabilities, like I want to transformation, I want to do the integration and the other stuff. And it's natural, right? It's always there. And so that's probably the reason why the integration platforms are still uh, alive in one way or another. So this this probably uh, one more actor to the uh, to the API management uh, use cases in general. Oops. Uh, actually, yeah, this is the, the good question. Is RPG similar to MuleSoft uh, by but owned by Google? We will I will talk a little, a little bit about that, but let me just sorry jump back a little bit. As you can see, MuleSoft is here. Now, the, the story is interesting. Uh, so the MuleSoft, uh, and we actually have strong MuleSoft competency software too, but MuleSoft, for me at least, it's uh, they came from e e ESB, right? Enterprise Service Bus, and we will talk a little bit about that. Uh, and they uh, are exposing their service bus as, as, as API, right? So that's where this comes from. While the APG is rather going the opposite way. Uh, in general, we can say that the, yes, those products are uh, compatible to to, uh, to to some extent. Both of them has the API management capabilities. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. Most I, I see already the discussion in the chat. I hope we will not go into the holy, holy war, which platform is better because there are the certain, certain use cases. But MuleSoft, for, for me at least, it's, 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 it's the platform known for their enterprise service bus and API management is on top, while APG is purely evolves as, as the API management platform. Uh, all right. So uh, that's th those are use cases and what I would like to highlight, right? So as for me, that also was was kind of a surprise when I when I brought this domain. We are not talking about this guy is not uh, the key role anymore. Uh, these the, the, these two guys, right? These application developer and the product owner, they are playing the key the key things here, right? So they are actually mandating what they want to do, and and those use cases are much more important. I want to be able to to know what, who's using my API. I want to make sure that the usage of my API is convenient, let's say, and I want to be able to, to track it, to monetize, uh, visualize this kind of stuff, right? This function is there, of course, but it's not, not primary anymore. It's, I would say, is used by, by default. And for this one, we will talk uh, separately. It actually also um, touches the, the new soft and the APG topic. Uh, all right, so how it's actually uh, achieved, right? How the uh, interest of those product owner and application developers are achieved. Uh, I was trying to draw it as, as, as a kind of a concept diagram and we will have some short demo after that. So if you can stay with me for a few more <laughs> minutes, I will try to explain what is here and then we will, we will take a look on that uh, on some live session. So if you if you think so, and I call it publishing as a concept, right? So uh, as as I was trying to say, when we talk about the API management, it much more important paradigm is how we publish the API and organize them rather than what what is inside. And that's that's like a cornerstone, I would say, of of, of an API management. And if we go into any other platform, uh, I'm, I'm almost sure that the same concept is there. For for few of them, I I had a chance to check, right? For those which I don't, I I, I still would expect them to have this because it's it de facto is like the standard how we manage the how we manage the API. Actually, that's probably good. Um, good, uh, good way to to call it. So we have API developers, right? And those people, they are just preparing our our APIs, right? API is typically a proxy service. We will take a look on that in a second. But let's assume those are my APIs. Uh, nothing else. So they just uh, and, and as you can see, these boundaries they are more or less what what we have on the API management platform. So API API developers are developing APIs and nothing nothing more here. Now there is a role of a product owner who's grouping our APIs into the product, and those product uh, are actually exposed then to the subscriber. Uh, the good thing which AP well the the capabilities which API management platform shall provide us and the capabilities which API, uh, APG sorry, provides actually. Uh, we can, uh, there are no limitations how we are grouping these this APIs into the product. And we can easily add additional attributes uh, to the product to be able to uh, make the access more granular, right? And to, so what we are exposing from our platform is not uh, URLs. We are saying, okay, you have to subscribe to this or that product. And based on that, we are able to to manage the behavior of a client. Now, the application developers, uh, it's one of, again, one of the quite popular and, and very important concept that application developers are able to register their, their applications themselves, right? So they are able to, to go to the API management platform and say, okay, I need the client which will work with this product. So I want to subscribe my application here. Or, and again, this is a mistake. So it is assumed to be another application, the, the silver app. I have to have the, the other application. So I want to register two, for example. And one will, will be user of this product, another one will be user of that product. And this these applications are nothing else just like uh, registered users or the logical entities. And once I, I have registered them and subscribe, I can provision them to my runtimes. And those are the clients. And this, this can be mobile app, this can be web application, this can be anything else. Uh, so when I when I provision those, they are able to start calling uh, my uh, my APIs in the way I want to to do it, right? So uh, the key the key the key 
he thinks here we have this separated development. The development is typically is separated from, from the publishing, right? And uh, subscription is separated from both of those. So we can register, anyone can register and subscribe if we allow. Uh, we, we can add additional, of course, uh, parameters to, to require authentication authorization. But everything is, is, is more, it's more like a logical model of how we expose that. And only, on, only after that, this is moved on to the, to the application around times. Um, quick demo. Hopefully you are not worth very much. Let me go and uh, uh, show you something. So uh, it's again, for me, it's like the shifting of paradigm. When we talk about the integration solutions, we typically start from showing the capabilities of data transformation and the other stuff. For API management, that's what we quite often do. We start from the developer portal. Why? Because remember, one of our important actors, or the most important actors, is the, our, our API consumer who's application developer, right? So if, if person wants to develop something against, I have, this is uh, our dev environment, say, right? And we have here three products exposed. And uh, the only thing I need to, to, to give the person, okay, here is my developer portal, and here you can go to the product, and inside the product, you will be able to see uh my api specification this is quite simple right the, the the only get request the response you will have some some simple body but that's that's typically enough and you can even try to test this so that's that's typically enough for the, to cover the part of uh, api uh, developer engagement Right, so uh, the good and well-defined developer portal is treated as a part of uh, of the API management platform, and it allows us to, the first thing first, right? It allows us to share the documentation. Now we can sign up or we can log in if we are already a registered developer. And let me quickly log in here. So uh, whatever I'm doing right now, I'm working from the perspective of outside developer, right? I'm just would like to start developing my APIs. And here on this portal, we actually have monetization included. So uh, being a user, so let's say I'm developing against, I don't know, I'm developing the, uh, the booking application and I'm using the, I don't know, booking.com APIs for, for some services. Uh, or I don't know, the actually the APIs we have there about some, uh, retail markets. Uh, here I can I can see what uh, what is my balance, and I can see what are the payment methods I have, uh, and what did I uh, oh I didn't uh, what are my subscriptions for example right so that's uh, I, I I'm able to manage my monetization directly from here directly from here I'm able to purchase purchase the APIs right so that's part of the API management which 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 is widely used so okay here. You can choose the app, you can create the application. Let me go back to the applications. I can, those are the applications I have created and I will show them in a second on the, um, on the API management and so on. The application is, here is my key, my secret. And uh, I, can, I can have a few of those, right? And for each of those apps, here is the list of products I can subscribe, right? If you remember, that's exactly what, what I was trying to show on the diagram. So the API owner or the product owner prepared for me some products, which I I've, I've been able to subscribe. Uh, some of them were purchase products. And for those products, I need to go to, uh, to, to, the, to the plans and, and, and purchase them, right? But once I did that, I should be able to run the testing of my APIs and I will show it in, in a second. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, we, we can. Uh, sorry, by the way, have you have you seen all this part of 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 the of of, of the screen I show just right now? Sorry, I just just came to my mind that somehow the presentation is not refreshed. Can you confirm, please, that you are able to see my developer portal last yes. five, five minutes? Okay. Yeah, right. we can. Yes, exactly. uh, I see question on in regards to the ma ma maturity of the API management. I will be happy to have this discussion just just if you let me finish. Uh, I'm more than happy to to talk about the the other the other opinions which we have. Uh, 
Uh, as mentioned, the idea here is not to to promote one platform uh, on top of another, right? For me, that's for me as the person who, who's using KDPI management, what they are doing seems to be the most reliable or mature way how to how to manage the APIs. Uh, anyway, so uh, the portal, right? That's the portal covers for us the perspective of uh, of a developer, uh, external application developer. Now that is uh, the APG console as such, and it covers uh, the perspectives of uh, API developer as, as well as API product owner. And the first thing first we would like to complete was the publishing, right? So here, uh, myself as a, a product owner, I'm able to create additional products or I can go and choose any of those. And uh, when I select the product, right, I obviously can add the resources, right? So that's the way how, uh, what, what, what's beneficial here? I can add uh, proxies, I can, I can add the different paths. I can even limit this by the, by the operation. So I can create read-only product. I can create a product which allows me just read and update, for example, on a different resources, on a different URL, different path. The, the way it simplifies, if we have plenty of those, right? We obviously wouldn't uh, like to keep somewhere the metrics. Well, what is who's using what? So we we can group them into products and allow people to use the product, and we are sure that they will not go beyond this. Uh, applications here, they can be as mentioned. They can be created through the portal. However, here I can just see, okay, what is what is there? What has been created? Or I can provision myself the same app. So that's that covers the perspective of uh, the publishing mainly and uh, how the pro productization looks like. Now let's get back uh, to the the presentation here. A uh, few more perspectives which we wanted to cover, right? API security and and visibility. Uh, from my API security is one of the topics which typically is <laughs> quite hot on the table and what what is offered here and what should be offered actually by by API management platform as such some levels to to do this right uh, topic is quite complex because we can use the different uh, we can do the security on the different levels right so we can do start from the like level IP level okay there is IP filtering which I can apply. We can do mutual TLS, so I can make sure that whatever system is communicating with my API management uh, is known and trusted, and we are encrypting with the certificates which he knows. Uh, there are additional policies for JSON XML th threat protection, uh, uh, and even more, we can we can restrict the number of requests being sent on the product level, application level, and the other stuff. Uh, authentication and authorization. So uh, almost any any platform which which can act as an as an gateway right now, like even Amazon API gateway, right? They are able to to verify the the token if needed. Now here is a little bit more. So uh, there are different different ways how we can authenticate uh, and authorize. There are different uh, ways of tokens. Uh, there are different roles which our API management system would like to pro to, to play. And that's everything there, right? So with with within build policies, uh, and again, speaking agnostically, that's that's one of the roles which API management platform as such should be able to do. Uh, be able to work with uh, JSON web tokens or the OPAC tokens. Uh, be able to generate, validate, to proxy them, uh, and act any of the roles in the in these so-called to dance, right? So it it, it either. We shall be able to to proxy the user identity only. The it shall be able to generate the JWT with with role based access if needed. All this kind of stuff shall be there, and that's one of the capabilities of the attributes of of, of, of the API management system. Uh, now uh, visibility uh, as part again as part of a good uh, API management system, I would say <laughs> mature. If we are talking about the. Uh, the wording, uh, the the monitoring shall be shall be there. So I want to quickly, I want to be able to quickly see uh, my statistics, uh, my reportings, uh, both technical and in the business layer, and that is what we can we can get from from APG two. Uh, 
it will be climate here that security because security is multi-level right and we will talk in a second about that in a few few minutes i would say uh it depends also a lot on the deployment option where our environment is uh, set up what are the capabilities we have uh, one more small demo perhaps uh, so uh, first of all probably analytics right this is something i would like to, to show you quickly so again the, the apg management console gives us uh, the capabilities to do whatever i want uh, some of the things are already pre-built and and then the business metrics is however they are there i can quickly go and check there like the, the actual policies, right? And we can choose one of the proxies or we can create a new one. Uh, the, what is inside, right? When you talk about, so we, we discussed, for example, how we can publish, how we can see, how we can develop. If we want to develop the APIs, we have multiple, uh, quite a huge amount of policies group uh, for traffic management as mentioned and it's part of traffic management part of the security we can use the caching we can have uh, we can do the spike arrest so we can yeah. block the, uh, to, to active uh, requests or requests which is, typically this is used when we have product with limited uh, requests per uh, per minute for example and this actually fits very well on the concept of uh, publishing and monetization. So if you buy the golden package, you may have 100 requests per second. If you buy the bronze, you may have just 10. Uh, those which I told about the authentication authorization, right? As you can see, there is plenty of, we can go with uh, OAuth token info, we can go with JWS, SAML SS, SAML action. We can go with, with all SAML, uh, JWT, Java web uh, keys, LDAP, uh, and even back and coding. And some capabilities on the mediation, I will stop on that uh, on the next slide. Uh, and extensions. Uh, typically what people <laughs> what people do, right? If you give me the new platform, the first thing I will ask you is where I can develop my own code. So on APG, this, this is here, we can do the Java callout if needed, or typically people use the, uh, the JavaScript. Uh, now, uh, quick demonstration, perhaps how it looks like from the uh, client perspective. So remember, how we have these our bronze application, and we have the, the URL which allows us to be called. You can actually double check it. We can go to the developer portal, right? So myself as a developer, I have subscribed to the product. This is my uh, specification. I can see that this is get URL, right? This is the the body which I would expect in the response. I can copy it here uh, and with this up key, I can go and hopefully in a second we'll get some yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm able to go and get some response, which is popular constructions in New York state, whatever it is, right? My product is exposing the statistics on the construction buildings in New York. Uh, now the interesting thing uh, and probably to emphasize once again, between the monetization and publishing, as you probably noticed, uh, if, Maybe not because I was clicking too, too fast. Uh, there is multiple products, and I'm actually my my application is subscribed to all of those. Uh, I can try also to use uh, the Silver uh, API, for example. Uh, and when I run it with as a, as a appropriate client, I will get the response. But if my uh, bronze guy will start to try to use that, right? Uh, it will get the response that nothing is working because uh, this API is monetized and it has not been purchased. So what, what I'm trying to emphasize, uh, we can easily 
allow our clients and be, be quite safe in the sense that we can expose APIs as a product. Uh, we can allow our clients to subscribe whatever they want. If we would like them to to pay for that, we can we can also add, enable the the payment, and that will not work anymore. Uh, differences between the proxy and the, and 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 and, uh, and and app. Let me go back to the questions, please. So application is a client, and that's something to 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 understand, right? So application is my client. It can be mobile application, it can be web application, right? It can be desktop application. But typically, in in API management world or in publishing taxonomy, at least, application is a is a client. While the pro the proxy is actually uh, the actual API. So it, it sits between the uh, the client application somewhere here. Should, shall be back. Right, so if you talk about the the flow, the data flow, so it goes from application through the API proxy to the backend. Backend is not here on this diagram because it's about the publishing, not about the end-to-end -end flow. So I'll, I hope I, I have answered the question uh, here. And um, now, last not least, and this is actually, I would say this 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 could be a topic of a separate discussion. Uh, See, so far we go through the API management and we talk very less about the actually how people see that, right? I have the proxy service. I want to have some additional capability. Remember, there was a guy on the, on the, on the bottom of our slide, a few cases. Uh, we, have, we have the proxy layer and it's quite natural to expect that this proxy layer can do something for us. Uh, yes, it, 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 it can. Right, and that's what typically we should expect from any API management platform, and that's what we expect and we get from from Apigee in this case. Uh, we shall have the capability to do the protocol transformation. I need to be able to go from REST to SOAP and vice versa, right? Because still there are many many SOAP APIs which I use. Uh, I need to have the basic capabilities of a data transformation. Uh, in case of Apigee, these are done. We can do XML to JSON uh, just as a, as a single policy. And for more advanced transformations, we can always use uh, the Java uh, JavaScripting, for example. Typical JavaScript is used, but we can use also the Java Java code. Uh, orchestration. It's uh, again one of the features which I uh, I, I do believe it's it makes no sense if, if if it is not on the platform. Uh, we we should be able to call some additional services if we need to. Uh, now the things which we need to keep keep in mind. Uh, sorry. Orchestration on APG is implemented through the service callout policy, right? So we can always uh, have a multiple calls to the different systems and then go to the target. Now, uh, those things are there and they are quite ex expectable. Now, the real time, we, we have to keep in mind that this is API proxies, right? So we, we always shall stay with the real time integration patterns. So for example, the, those orchestrations, if we need to do that, it's okay if we do it, for example, for the for the control flow, or we we do it like just to 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 trigger something or get small amount of the data. It shall not be the orchestrations like they are for the people uh, processes or uh, long running integration process, right? The real time integration patterns only, obviously, because we are on the HTTP. Uh, we have to send the response. We have the HTTP timeout. We have to be quick. Uh, API integrations. Uh, APG as such, like out of the box, and I believe other API management platforms do, they are paying very less attention to the non-API non integrations, which are like the database or the file-based integration or something like this. Uh, obviously, there is, uh, it is called no, no enterprise service bus architecture. So it's definitely not an enterprise service bus. It's not the goal, right? The goal is to set up the proxy and through this proxy, expose your backend service and be able to manage what you exposed, but not uh, set up the comprehensive uh, data flow uh, for for the for the for the integration. Now, the interesting things we've been touching the MuleSoft, right? Uh, and I, I told my opinion that MuleSoft grew up as ESB, and they realized they need to have the API um, management platform, right? And they are quite, quite, quite strong in that, as we, as we see on the at least according to the Gardner <laughs> Magic Quadrant and my colleagues from from the MuleSoft team. Now, APG uh, actually Google, well, not APG, Google is actually following uh, the other way down. Uh, remember, uh, there was API management as such, right? The APG, which has been acquired by Google because they were quite strong and still are in the API management domain. But they understand that it may not be enough 
uh, when we talk about the, especially about the enterprise clients. And right now, Google is introducing the new feature, which is called application integration, which is implemented on the Google Cloud. And which allows uh, actually to cover the things which which are not covered. Like, okay, if I need to have the long running process, if I want to read the data from the file, right to the database, uh, and so on. Right. So for me, it's it's personally for me, it was like an interesting way. So the, at the end, they both are more or less in the same uh, same point, right? Just those those go from ASB and add API management on top, and 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 in case of Google, they they are rather going down. They have API management as a, as, as a system they offer, and they are adding the integration layer below if you if you need it. Uh, I promise to talk about the use cases, right? If we if we talk about the solution solution architecture perspective, uh, the typical question is, okay, who who can buy this or who who's interested? I dare to split them into some categories. They are not uh, not ideal, of course, but the things I wanted to maybe just to highlight in in, in the case who are, who are the clients for this. So the enterprise clients or the big big up big 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 companies, right? They typically quite oftenly they are looking for the API as a product uh, digital initiative, right? So it's more or less the same. Uh, well, it's probably the, the scale is less, but if, if if you know there is this up to cloud, right? I want to move my centers to cloud and this is called the big digitalization initiative so api as a product is the second part of that and uh, there are really interesting uh, cases where the clients are really struggling they're saying okay i have multiple it departments for supply chain we are talking about enterprise right the big company i have multiple it departments i'm not able to, to understand what they're doing inside they're developing some code they're developing some apps and i don't know if i need it so uh, and that's where they uh, they are happy to 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 look into API as a product because here we start remember we start from the client right we start who will use this API or what you want to sell what is the function you want to sell and that immediately means that okay part of my application portfolio probably can be thrown away at least completely right and in this case for this like initiatives they are looking in the API management uh, as as a foundation platform. Uh, again, the next, the, the other driver for them is huge, a huge number of APIs. So they are happy to have the centralized platform and put some guardrails there and let the people expose the API because they have manageability at least. They're able to understand, okay, uh, how many of those, what is the track? Remember this visibility and, and analytics uh, part. And API integration, we discussed that. So uh, sometimes it's enough to, and in, in most of the cases, right? The world is shifting more and more to, to the rest, uh, REST-based integrations. That's where API platform can act, uh, API management platform can, can act as the, can, can, can play the role of API integration. But sometimes it's not enough. And, and as mentioned, Google is offering additional service. Uh, digital products. Um, uh, Fintech, for example, we had we had the fintech uh, client recently, uh, or the companies who are developing their products already like oriented on the uh, digital usage. I don't know Airbnb, probably Uber, um, as mentioned fintech, right? They, they they rather might have the huge number of application developers to be engaged, right? So, for example, I want to have I'm, I'm offering some services to the API, and I want to have those. Uh, I, I believe they are fancy. I'm starting the digital product. Uh, for me, it's crucial that the people who finally go to my page and start using my product, they will be able to immediately, so they, they won't be bored, right? They will want to continue with me. Uh, and I want to make sure that my API is on the market very quickly. So, okay, I have the backend server developed my microservices, so they're cool. I need to, 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 to quickly deliver that to, that to the users. Uh, and the other quite huge, actually, and inter interesting part for us, at least in the API management, is the indus industry specific clients. I call them industry specific because um, the word, again, is it seems they are tending to standardize the APIs. For, for the healthcare, this is fire. For the, the telco, it's the telecom management forum, right? For the banking, it's open banking. So those uh, standards are dictating and mandating us if we want to expose, for example, if I want to expose the healthcare services, I have to be strictly compliant with the uh, the way how, uh, how I support the authentication, what are the tokens, uh, payloads, API contracts, all, all this stuff, right? And this is true for all three of those. That's where actually um, quite beneficial to have, that's when, when 
typically people come and say, okay, I have already backend layer. It's def of course it's not compatible with open open banking because open banking was not there when I was developing that. Or Fire, it just appears recently. I already have my services exposed for for years. Uh, that's where we go with with the API proxy, and it's not the API management in the sense of publishing. It's much more in the customization, actually, the capabilities of data transformation and 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 the other stuff, right? So that's where we say our proxy is not a pass through proxy. It's much more 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 behind. And um, I would say that's probably uh, on the edge of API management as such, but there are many such cases. So, so they are actually very interesting to us uh, as API management people to, to get and work on. Uh, last part of it, we still have time and I, I will try to be quick. Uh, so we discussed, let's say, how I can position my box in, in a sense of a business uh, or high level solution architecture, right? What, what are the problems my API management box can help me to resolve. Now, uh, my next immediate next question will be, okay, how can I place it in my, in my solution, right? I have already something, I have IT ecosystem, it can be cloud, it can be on-prem, it can be something else. And uh, if, if my previous concept, whatever I explained before, right, I, I would assume that it's more or less uh, even vendor agnostic because it, it was like a concept, okay, this is the product developer, we should care about it, the those and so far. This will be very specific because that's what actually APG offering is. Uh, and that's probably where they are strong in the sense of uh, delivery the idea, right? So APG offers us for different uh, deployment options. Uh, it's APG Edge, APG X, Hybrid and APDK. Uh, edge deployment, it's a typical SaaS uh, SaaS service, pure SaaS, I would say, right? You don't care about anything. You get the your web console, you log into the web console book, you start developing your APIs immediately. So your, your runtime is not your headache anymore. It ideally fits in a situation when you have the other SaaS as a backend, right? So you're adding some, uh, some additional values on top of the existing SaaS solutions. Uh, because if we talk about on-prem connectivity, right, quite often it's a security concern. So, of course, we have capabilities. APG is offering us, for example, the MTLS to be established between those two. Uh, but quite often it's a concern. Uh, yet it's it's still very much used, right? This is very convenient. Uh, if you just need for need 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 some features of API management, you go to 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 the to the edge and you have it. FGX, um, I had discussion once with, with an interesting guy from Microsoft and he told that uh, sometime back of course, and he told that Microsoft, for example, is treating API management as part of their cloud offering while Google is not. And after that discussion, after some time, actually Google uh, released FGX and this is, uh, they answered that question. Actually. Like, probably they, uh, they really understand the, uh, the demand on the market. So FGX is fully uh, it's integrated into the Google Cloud offering. Uh, it, as you can see here, the client client need to have some uh, virtual private cloud to to pass the traffic, and APG runtime is provisioned as a Google managed VPC, which is paired with with our VPC. And everything is happening inside the cloud. Now the the good things it's it's quite a strong move in my opinion, especially if if you are already Google Cloud. Cloud, uh, Google Google Cloud client, sorry, right? Uh, the reason is uh, we can use, we as a client can use uh, all the flavor of, uh, of a services to manage the connectivity. We can use our own cloud armor. We are definitely managing everything through our own cloud IAM, right? We can here have some additional services, whatever we want to. We have login stored here, right? Everything is, uh, con we have much more control than we have it in case of SaaS solution here, right? And we still have the flexibility of, a, of a connectivity either to the SaaS backends or the on-prem, which can be, for example, partner in interconnect or, or anything else. And still bear in mind that part of the backends are assumed to be in the same Google Cloud, right? So our traffic is not leaving uh, Google Cloud. That's probably the most um, uh, proficient options right now, especially as mentioned, in, in case we have infrastructure already in, in the Google. And it's interesting point, Google is having actually API gateway, as you, as you probably know, uh, but they are, they are actually trying to separate this it's exactly in a way we're discussing here. So if you if you really feel the need of managing API as a product, or you, you think that it's you, you the APIs are bringing business values, you should go with APG. If you just want to expose the endpoint, you can use something else, it will be easier. 
Hybrid deployment, it's an answer to those who don't want to have their runtime traffic, their runtime to be in the cloud, right? So we still have Google Cloud management. Uh, we have Epigee management plane in the, in the cloud. And it is managed by Google. It's not our VPC anymore. It's managed by Google. But the runtime plane is on-prem. Typically, it's on Kubernetes cluster, um, almost any of those. It can be AWS. Actually, this, this part also is very well sell. So it can be very well sell in case we talk about the other cloud than Google. It can run on AWS, uh, Azure. It can run on-prem, on Kubernetes, OpenShift, or anything else. Uh, the major concern is this result here, right? Our backend is uh, the same place where runtime is. Bear in mind that still the security part here, right? The network firewall load balancer that typically shall be covered by additional devices of five or something else. Uh, on prem, for those who are old school guys and who likes to manage everything themselves, uh, on prem does not have anything in the cloud. Everything is inside. There is a separate database for the analytic and statistics. There is held up database for the users. Uh, there is no Kubernetes even. It's, it's a sort of application cluster and the balancing is done on, on some sort of health check and the other stuff. It is still used, especially telcos, they like on-prem on a lot because they want to keep the traffic, uh, traffic safe. Uh, that's uh, almost all I have uh, for, for this session. Uh, if you... Now, probably the last 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 step here, right? So assuming you see the need of API management platform and uh, see the strategy feature needs. So service mentioned has quite strong uh, practice. Uh, it, it, it's, it's not strong because I'm there. It's strong because it's a Google partnership uh, and uh, the, the partner of a year. Uh, and we are recognized quite quite well as, as API management group, uh, group in Google. So we can deliver full flavor for, for your... Uh, projects. Uh, there are no more other questions in, in, in the chat except so I can probably go back to the one uh, about the maturity. So yes, I do believe that APG is quite mature, uh, mature platform in the API management. They were one of the first and uh, I, I, I see in, in, in many other platforms, I see the ways uh, things are done in a very similar way. I there is, I'm not sure if you have this, there is even one of the companies who's trying to uh, Gravity, I believe they are called. They are uh, periodically sending uh, me different uh, promo messages in, in LinkedIn, uh, like uh, don't start with ZPG, like they are trying to, to directly compete, compete with ZPG as a platform. So yes, I do believe in that. Uh, uh, yeah, I understand this is uh, disputable. I wouldn't say that there are no uh, equally uh, good players, right? I'm just saying that the, the, the things I learned about the API management working with APG for me were quite quite interesting and sufficient. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, the unfortunately it seems like I was not able to cover the goal of my presentation completely. How we can uh, what we can suggest and what are the uh, the other solution. So the first thing I was, was was trying to cover, do you need API management at all or not, right? And that was probably the key message. And when I was trying to, to show these, these guys, right? Those are the guys which really uh, need them. So if you're, uh, and, and the question is, do you foresee the need of API management in the solution you're building, right? If you see that you will have the huge amount of APIs at some time, or you, if you will see that you will have huge amount of clients, right? Or if you see that you need the strict visibility of your APIs due to the security reasons or the governance reasons, that's the way where you should go with the API management. And that's the way where your API gateway may not be enough. That's what uh, the main topic I was trying to explain, right? There is a concept behind which allows you, if, 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 if the buzzword API is a product, uh, somehow make your clients to react, you definitely should go with the API, API management as such. Now, in regards of the vendors and the products or, or the other solutions, uh, this is probably the good, the good slide for you if you want to compare, right? So there are, there are other solutions. There is, uh, oh my God, I forget the name. There is this similar solution for, from, the, uh, from the IBM. There is solution from the Mulesoft. There is, there is Microsoft has mentioned they are, uh, 
proposing as part of the Azure cloud, they are proposing API management. Uh, there are move, movements back and forth. Sometimes we, we've been participating sometimes in the APG on the Azure. So um, obviously I'm representing the APG team. So I, I, I do believe that APG should be offered as the API management solution. And the deployment options should cover your client needs if, if, if they are specific. But again, the goal of presentation was to explain what API management is and do you really need it rather than compare the different products. Yeah, I hope I answered the question as much as I was able to. Yeah, maybe uh, someone have questions. Yeah, uh, sorry. A question about API management in particular is how versioning and breaking changes in the APIs are handled. Okay. Is it expected that it should be responsibility of the corresponding API teams, the resource yeah. teams, or can uh, APG uh, do uh, help here with something? This is nice, yeah. nice, nice question. Appreciate it. So uh, uh, there are different aspects to that, right? We have to separate the API version as such, and this shall be managed through the API contract. Right. So I'm publishing the version one of my API and it shall be here, right? It shall be clearly visible here on the portal, right? If, you, if we go back to, to the, to the uh, APIs, which we show, right? When developers comes in, we, we, we definitely, we typically should have, well, the best practices tells us always include the version. And, but that's nothing else, just the versioning of a contract, right? And we shall expect that if this is still V1, whatever happening in the ground uh, shall not change. And that's that's what uh, sometimes we actually do inside the proxy. So for the backward compatibility, we may need to add some additional policies to be able to handle that. Now, uh, the API proxies as such, they have revisions. So when we develop here, or we can actually develop, uh, there is a local development tool, we, we plug in VCS, VCS code plugin. Uh, APG allows to use the well the common uh, development uh, practices. So yes, we can have the branches, we can match them, and we can deploy this that as a different revision uh, here. So API proxy versioning is supposed to be managed fully by the API by the platform, right? When you deploy a new version, you have new revision, and uh, new revisions are showing up based on the requirements to the API proxy, right? So our development team, we have the backlog, uh, we may change something, uh, the new revision appears. But the API versioning, uh, what our clients are showing, it's supposed to be managed rather by the significant features, right? Or the product, uh, um, um, well, product owner, I would say. So in version V1, we have this payload. In version V2, we have different, but that's uh, that's not, that shall not be driven from here. Hopefully I answer that. And thank you, yes, IBM API Connect. And, and that's, it, it, it is also quite quite used. Yes, and I, I tend to agree to that. All right. And did I answer the question, Ivor? If not? Yeah, uh, I mean, that's something that uh, is a constant theme, recurring theme for our projects, right? And the biggest challenge here is that uh, not all the teams are aware that the changes might be breaking because the whole definition of what is breaking change and what's not, it's uh, is a bit hazy. And yes, there is a lot of vendors involved yes. so it's um, i'd say it's uneven the whole horizon um, best practice horizon is uneven and uh, yeah so the idea is that api management i mean managing api version is mostly responsibility of uh, products of apis themselves yeah i would say the publisher who's composing the product is responsible for include the api versions but not mm -hmm. the code revisions revisions are done by uh, so i can compose compose the product based on the on the different apis i want to in regards to the uh, the, 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 the 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 concern you raised that developers typically can br break the contract um, it, it can be resolved in the development uh, environment. Like I can have the first proxy, which is exposing my contract and doing some validations and uh, decouple the logic in, in the separate proxy with the shared flow. 
as much as it can. But unfortunately, there is no silver silver bullet, sorry, uh, or there is no magic 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 hint how to make sure that your developers will not break your API contract. Just, yeah, just yeah, make sure. And that was actually my second question. What about environments? So, what's the typical environment setup for APG based products? Is there yeah. like dev staging yes. and mm -hmm. So APG has two, uh, it's actually a separate concept. Uh, they have uh, the concept of an organization and the environment. So typically organization is a runtime instance. This is my organization, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and in general, this is what is uh, the subject of licensing. In, in, in terms of APG, um, X, X for example. well, we can say that this is more or less the the Kubernetes cluster is is is, is where my organization is, right? Uh, or this is my organization, right? It's it's my single Google Cloud pro, pro, pro project, and this is where my organization is. Now inside the organization, I can have uh, the different. Uh, sorry, where is my admin? Uh, I can have different environments inside. To oops, sorry, I, I lost the admins here. Uh, environment, sorry. Mm -hmm. I can have different environments here. So they will be executed inside the same runtime, but they will be, in, in, in terms of Kubernetes, they will be separate pods. So right now here I have only single environment, I can add more. They will have separate URLs. They may have different uh, key value maps. So I, I can split them by the data, uh, the TLS keys and the virtual host is where actually my, uh, my environment is listening. So typical setup is one organization because the subject of licensing and inside we can create as many environments as we want to. And we can deploy directly to the environment or sometimes we can just copy and deploy environment from one proxy to another. So I can go here and then see where it is deployed and we deploy to the different environments. But all of those work with essentially product and production environments of the corresponding a and At the end, APIs, yes, we, right? have, we have production environment here and we will see the APIs which are deployed in the production. Let me see if in the other organization I have more. Um, so yes, that's 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 essentially the idea. Sometimes, sometimes clients goes goes farther and they say, "I want separate dev runtime." I don't, don't mm -hmm. want environment. I want runtime. In this case, sure, you buy two licenses, you have two different, uh, completely separated, uh, isolated runtimes. Here, yes. actually, you can see I have two devs, right? And then some proxies are those are not green; they are not deployed in in, in, in the the one or the two. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Right, uh, one minute left. Uh, so thank you all for your time. Uh, I hope I didn't offend, uh, offend anyone by saying that RPG is a good, it's just my belief. I hope you get something from this presentation. Uh, it may help you somehow. Uh, and if you have any, any questions on that matter, there is a huge, huge group of us. Uh, so we can check our organizational structure in the teams and we will be happy to answer your questions. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for your presentation, uh, Alexander, and uh, all for join and uh, for questions. Um, you will receive a feedback form shortly. Please fill it out. Your opinion matters. And we will be happy to see all of you next event. Have a nice day all. Bye.